So welcome to the second series of my research proposal. And today we are going to focus on uh, uh, chapter one in terms of uh, research proposal component. So in chapter one, we have uh, introductions and the introduction uh, intends to give the reader a solid background of the phenomenon being a study. This time you are introducing yourself. We, are, we have to so clearly that uh, whatever uh, the reader who is going to read your proposal or who is going to find your proposal, is something you have uh, know about it. So it has to show a good uh, introduction. It is the piece of your study. So it should provide the reader with information that you will need to research justification and a statement of the problem. So information can include either a need to replicate a previous study done uh, due to shortcomings. So a certain study was done, but uh, it has some uh, shortcomings or application of previous research to a different population. It was done, this study was done in children, then you want to do it in adult, it was done in, uh, in America, you want to do it in Africa, all those type of things. So it can also discuss a new theory on, on the new quantitative and quantitative data. So most likely you want to do another theory, most likely the study comprises, let's say you're doing a study about uh, a fracture femur in men, we want to do it uh, in another theory, uh, in femoral, or uh, uh, then uh, you have to do it in a quantitative data perspective or quantitative data perspective, it's, uh, both of them so that you can solve uh, the relationship. So uh, there is such a, 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 a introductory part as soon as so a summary of the key uh, components in the literature review, a, a summary of what is known and the contribution of the current study, the research in or the main objectives, a summary of the research design, concise definition of each context research standard will be used throughout the proposal. So most likely there are some uh, uh, professional or uh, scientific terminologies you are to see. This is the time now you should be able to explain uh, what they mean in the code if they are going to be repeated uh, several times in their study. So in general, the reader should be able to understand the need for the present study and uh, have a solid understanding of the such uh, theories. Ideally, the introduction should have um, four, six pages, something beyond uh, chapter one, uh, uh, although that one is clumsy and it will bring a lot of issues. You will be able to do it in a better way. So it is very good for you to be able uh, to understand uh, that uh, study like that. So uh, in chapter one, uh, in chapter one, we have 1.1, which comprises the background information and the background information of the studies with the, uh, so the understanding and the genesis of the problem. So, so uh, understand, do you understand the problem? Do you understand where the problem has started from? Intended to provide the reader with critical information about the topic you being studying. For example, by writing and expanding a whole foundation of studies conducted in the previous. So you have to write various studies done somewhere else for the previous time. What were they thought? What were they? You, you criticize it, you see what were the gaps in it, then you, you build on it. You have to describe important historical events that inform why and in what ways the research problem exists. You can have a chronological existence of media studies done somewhere else here and there. For example, uh, how they have been doing and what they are, how they have been and being uh, improving and uh, the shortcomings of the studies. So Define a key component of the study, for example, concept, place, people, and the phenomena. Talk about the global perspective, then you can talk, the, the, for example, globally uh, about the fracture human. You can talk about the uh, uh, Africa perspective, then download it the place of your point of study, the local scenario. Talk about the target group in the study group, and you want to study in this uh, target group. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, um, uh, that is uh, about uh, uh, the introductory part of it. Then you have to talk about the statement of the problem. So in the statement of the problem is that that is 1.2. <clears throat> so in this one, it is describes of difficulty of need. Oh, there is, you have to describe there is a problem. 
for example, we describe there is a problem of, of uh, this and this. There is a problem of a certain illness in the community. There is a problem of death of infant. There is a problem of mothers not attending uh, the antenatal clinic. There is a problem of mothers not uh, uh, delivering in hospitals. There is a problem of children not getting BCG injections. There is a problem of people not going to the hospital because when they have a fracture hanko and then they stay at home, they don't uh, 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 do what they don't get the air uh, services. So you have to, to solve the problem you want to, to tackle at this uh, point. It is a uh, this would concise a description of the issue to be addressed or a, a condition to be improved upon. It must indicate exactly what is the problem is if the children are dying in the community. We have it to say that the children are dying in the community. It must indicate why and how it is a problem and it should leave the information to support the need for standing. You should show the reason why uh, uh, you want to uh, do that one. For example, you may have the number of uh, cases which uh, are, are, are dying because of a certain problem in a certain community. So you want to show uh, the statistical evidence uh, should be uh, derived from a back cloud and uh, informational trust rate uh, connectivity so that it is propagating from the what? From the background um, a study. Ideally, statement of the program should not uh, be more than a one page of paper. Uh, so, uh, what are the qualities of an effective statement of the problem? Number one, the statement of the problem should be clearly and consistent. It is to so define issues need to be solved. It must indicate the urgency of the study and definitive need. It must be serviceable and it must be supported by statement of evidence and it must be state in simple and objective language. Never use co uh, comical things, emotional and poetic things. Uh, uh, those are not, are not accepted when you're doing any such work. And it must have impact on the whole topic uh, uh, of study. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the statement of the problem should have ideal, should be reality, should be consequential and proposal. Those are the recommended sections of a statement of the problem. It should describe the design or to be state of the process or product. Identifies the goal of the stakeholders and the customers as well as define the problem. Illustrate what, is, what the expected environment would look like once the situation is implemented. So uh, in reality, it is to be described as is what is exactly the situation it's at hand. And it should include insight and expertise and subject matters during the problem analysis. So consequences uh, as describe the impact on the society, business, if the problem is not fixed or improved, includes Cost associated with the loss of money, time, productivity, and competitiveness and advantages. So, so the magnitude of effect and the soon time, so that it helps to determine the priority of the statement of the project you want to undertake. So uh, the proposal it is so uh, so a potential solution. Whatever the statement of the problem, so the uh, so the so uh, the statement of so the so that you have a you have a solution to this problem. <laughs> so. Your proposal is going to solve this problem and uh, can also include suggestions by the stakeholders, customers, although further decision and research will be needed um, before a specific course of action can be uh, determined. Uh, so a uh, research proposal component number one point B is an objective. Objectives should uh, coincide with the uh, topic of the study. So the main objective is one general objective with aim of study. So it be in line with the title of your study. Uh, uh, in line in the title of the study. For example, let's say uh, you want to study about um, uh, uh, factors influencing uh, factors influencing uh, uh, factors affecting uh, um, exclusive best feeding at for this uh, district hospital. So. The main objective uh, uh, maybe is uh, what uh, what factors you ask yourself what factors make mothers at uh, 
that was used this was put on to practice the what exclusive best feeding. So specific objective you can either have the 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 the, the mothers one objective you can have a. Uh, uh, Main objectives, uh, which you call them also specific objectives, you can have raising the uh, class by them like who attended the antenatal clinic and who not attend the antenatal clinic. You can have them as minor objectives. Alternatively, the objectives you can classify them as the, the maternal factors, the facility factors, and the system, which is the governance factors in those three ways. So you analyze. The reason why mother is not uh, doing exclusive breastfeeding uh, factors associated with herself, like disease, cannot attend at another clinic, then you come to the herald worker. Is this herald work having a factor? Then the other one, you have the system, the governance of the herald, the government, you check for those ones as the minor objective. So it can be aligned like that one. So how to be, uh, 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 the specific objectives should be at least three or four. Anything uh, ideally uh, two or three are good. More than four, that is very clumsy. Understand it difficult. I mean, it be very clumsy. So I have to be in line with the variables and hypothesis to increase the phenomena in the study. And should not be equations in the questionnaire. And it should be smart. It should be uh, smart. So uh, qualities of a good objective is that it should be understandable, it should be smart, as uh, 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 so hierarchy and quantitative and qualitative, and it should be flexible. So uh, such questions is a critical uh, uh, part also, which is a 1.4, and it is to define the proposal, so you get the argument and the inquiry in the standard. So we can note the interest of the reviewers. Questions should be in line with the specific objectives and the equal number should be numbered one, two, three, four, uh, and should include questions and not statements. Questions should be clearly demonstrating the relevance to the society and either the standard group, the, the social group, the literature, or the debates which is taking place in, the, in a certain area. So the research questions should be clearly and doable. Should be clearly and doable. So uh, the other one is the hypothesis. Hypothesis is 1.5. Is an assumption to tentatively explain certain behaviors patterns in a phenomenon or event. So the, it defines a statement that describes a known but tentatively reasonable outcome for the existing phenomenon. So there are three types of hypotheses. There is conceptual hypothesis, research hypothesis, and statistical hypothesis. In a conceptual uh, hypothesis, it explains expected relationship to the theoretical uh, concept. Uh, and then uh, this one uh, is where one uh, is uh, depending on the other in uh, terms of uh, theory. For example, in children, you know that the height will depend with what? With age. And the height may also depend, and also weight may depend with the height. That is conceptual. So in this search, explain uh, the expected relationship between two observable variables, uh, uh, either dependable or independable variables, where one, one, one is depending on the other. For example, uh, uh, the intervention when you're doing a fracture fever uh, uh, management intervention, the intervention may, may the type of intervention you put in is also going to determine the health value. A fracture, which a uh, fracture femur, which is intervened with the use of a POP, uh, they don't end up being the same with a fracture, which is done what internal uh, fixation. The other one is statistical. This one explains an expected relationship between numbers and the present statistical properties of data, such as mean, variance, and correlation. Uh, uh, this one, I guess, about the value of a population parameter or values between a few or more uh, parameters. So uh, the, there are two forms of hypothesis. There is narrow hypothesis and the alternative uh, hypothesis. So in narrow hypothesis, it is stated that there is no difference between the variables uh, studied. It is normally used to prove the relationship as long by rejecting the null hypothesis. 
Whereas the alternative hypothesis, it is that it is stated that there is a difference between variables and standards. It is normally used to do the definition as right by accepting the alternative hypothesis. So when the null hypothesis reject the alternative uh, hypothesis is accepted, and when the null hypothesis is accepted, the alternative uh, 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 hypothesis uh, is uh, rejected. Uh, so uh, what uh, importance of hypothesis in research is that uh, it states uh, expectations about relationship between two variables or more. It defines the research opinions, provides a standing in the forecast. It tells one what the specific aspect of a research problem to be investigated. It defines the variables in the standing and enables the researcher to collect the right data to support or reject it. It tells one what data to collect and what not to collect, thereby providing a focus study. It provides an ensign objectivity in a study and enables one to add to the formulation of a view. It enables one to specifically conclude what is true and what is false. Uh, so, qualities of an effective uh, policy is that it is stated clearly and consistently possible relationship between variables and it defines the variables in operational and measurable terms, must be able to be tested and to be able to be verified without the data, must consistent and body of the of knowledge, and it must be logical argument to justify a hypothesis, must be one. We should be very clear and very precise. Uh, so uh, the other one is uh, 1.6, that is a uh, uh, justification of your standing. Or what is called a uh, rationale? What is your rationale in the study? Uh, the rationale must be clear from existing literature on the subject. So must illustrate why the researcher is conducting the research and who it is the benefit in the community. Is it a hospital? Is it the researchers? Is it the patients? Is it the health workers? So, so to justify the resources and required to undertake the source project, taking into account the nature and the complexity of the study. The four areas to be considered is the size of the study, the gaps in the literature, that in the demands uh, attention from the previous other studies which viewed from other people who have the same interest on it. What gap did they create? What did they not do so that you can uh, 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 hand upon that? <clears throat> so the unusual or improved methodology being used is also very important and the benefit in terms of policy practice and that is benefit and impact in the community uh, in your study. So the other is 1.7, this is what? The scope of the study. How far are you going to do the study in terms of knowledge, geographical, and time? So in terms of knowledge, every study covers a given area of knowledge. The object of research questions arise to direct the knowledge scope of the study. So in this case, you have to know at what extent are you going to do the study. No single study covers all areas of knowledge and no single study does not. Uh, open new areas of questions. So every study always uh, open new areas of uh, questions. Uh, so if a study does not open new areas of time, that means the study is not good. So geographically, every study is limited in terms of geographical coverage, it is to indicate the target group and the population. So another important factor is time. Time uh, when you are doing research study, uh, time is a limiting factor in terms of time. Time constraints may influence the outcome of a study if not well managed. And since uh, most of the studies are done by students, so this is a very important uh, factor. So uh, the other one is research proposal component is uh, things like limitations of the study indicate the challenges encountered in the study that we are limited to study. For example. Uh, finance, uh, uh, language barrier, uh, transport, uh, uh, lead, all those type of things, uh, policy, uh, all of these ones are uh, also uh, ethical issues. Uh, uh, in when you are doing the same like you are standing on mind or filters or young infants, all those are uh, what limiting uh, factors of spending. 
So limitations are not necessary in doing the proposal, but they are very necessary when you will be doing the final analysis. After doing the proposal, you do a project now, this one so it will be very uh, relevant. Uh, so uh, the 1.9 is concept of framework. This is a set of broad ideas, principles taken from the relevant field of inquiry and used to structure a subsequent uh, presentation. It was done by Richie and Leme in 1987. It's the position of those people. It's the researchers who position in the problem and help the researcher to develop a wide awareness and understanding, understanding and communicate it. It may be an adaptation of a model used in previous standing with modification to suit the inquiry. So, the importance of concept of a, a framework is uh, to provide a clear linkage from literature research and goals. Uh, questions contribute to formulation of research uh, and design. Uh, so, so the concept of framework provides a reference point of discussion for literature methodology and data analysis. It contributes to trustworthiness of the study, gives a good scope to research thinking, it helps contextualize research problems and linking ideas with data to be collected. So, what are the qualities of a good concept of framework? It gives directions to the study and the source relationship between the various constructions of the study. So they demonstrate an understanding of what variables influences what. So it be logic and less the title of the question and statement of the problem. So the concept of framework should be specific and well articulated. So they account for and explain the phenomenon should provide tentative answers to research questions, issues, and the problem. So we need system it and address the variable various aspect of the problems as the key areas. So a uh, uh, suggested step is that setting the concept of framework or uh, paradigm and the identification of variables and pointing out independent and, in, and intervening dependent variables and the same direction of the study and relationship between the uh, variables. So uh, that is an example of a concept of framework uh, in a business perspective. You can see that uh, there is independent variables, extinct uh, motivation uh, factors, uh, like basic salaries, allowances, and overtime are, and are independent variables. Intrinsic motivations are allowed for the job coming from now inside your self, career development and the training. These ones influences the performance at the place of work, but in between there, they can be modified by who? By the manager, which uh, would be, for example, is he applying participatory type of uh, leadership or authoritative type of leadership? That one, and depending on this one, if you depend the type of um, intervention is the manager is going to put there, then it can determine the performance in terms of timeless customer care and performance of report. And that is the head of uh, this uh, topic about the uh, uh, chapter one in research and methodology. And, uh, uh, which is a summary of it. And if you follow this one consistently, you can be able to read and the uh, chapter one of uh, research uh, methodology. Thank you very much uh, for listening uh, to this.